Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Telios Andradis. Uh, this is um, the team that we worked. Uh, we worked for this uh, uh, all three tasks. Uh, all three subtasks. Sub um, I'm from the research, the Center of uh, Research uh, and Technology, Hellas. And um, so I'll start with uh, the first of the uh, subtasks, where just to remind you, the goal was to detect uh, which articles uh, talk about flood, but um, uh, based on the images that are that come with the articles. Uh, some examples of the challenges we met is uh, that some of the images uh, do not present a flood, uh, but the article talks about it. Uh, on the other hand, there are images uh, of flood, but the article has nothing to do with that. And uh, many images where the, the water is present, uh, but it's not uh, flood water. Uh, so the methodology was uh, VGG architecture. Uh, pre-trained on the data set called Places uh, 365. Uh, we, we, we built two different models. The um, uh, CNN uh, 2019 um, fine-tuned on the development set provided this year for the subtask. And uh, also another model, the uh, CNN 2017, uh, fine-tuned on the uh, development set that was provided in uh, 2017 for the um, uh, task of detecting flood or no flood. Okay, the results were far better for the um, for the the classifier based on the new uh, data set and uh, hypothesis both on the dev set and the tested. Uh, F1 scores. Uh, one hypothesis that we make is that um, the, the new classifier also learned that the appearance of certain groups like politicians or authorities um, might indicate a f uh, an article about floods. Um, from the confusion matrix, we detected that there were a lot of false positives, uh, which we suppose was due to mm, showing flooded areas, but the articles were irrelevant. Uh, for the second subtask, where the goal was to detect whether people are standing uh, in water above the knee, uh, we had we used the visual information building a visual classifier by fine-tuning a 22-layer Google Net network. Uh, where the classification layer were um, 375 concepts from the TrackFit challenge. And uh, from out of those uh, hundreds of concepts, we selected the some people related, uh, adult person, two people, and also some water related, like river and waterscape waterfront. And then using these uh, five concepts, we trained an SVM, uh, a binary SVM classifier. Uh, but using the textual information, uh, we selected the word to vec method uh, that considers word embeddings. These are these stand on the uh, concept that similar wor words tend to occur together and uh, also have similar context, like. Uh, like basketball and sports. And uh, they are based on the deep uh, neural networks. So using these uh, word to vec text representations, we've also trained a binary SVM classifier. Uh, the fusion was a very simple late fusion with emphasis on the visual. Mm, I don't think it's interesting. It was a very simple um, methodology. Uh, actually, it was like if they both agreed if the visual and the textual classifier agreed, then it was the agreed uh, label. Uh, otherwise, it was the visual. Of course, that led that the, the, the score of the fusion was exactly the same uh, with the visual. So nothing interesting there. Um, but uh, again, from the confusion matrix in the visual classifier, from the results of the visual classifier, 
uh, we saw a lot of false positives, um, possibly because the humans and the water areas were both uh, correctly identified, but that, that didn't mean that uh, the pe those people were uh, actually in water above knee. Uh, one of the ideas that we want to investigate is uh, segmentation so that we know where the bounding box of the detected human is, where the bounding box of water is. So maybe if they overlap, then there is a high chance of people in water. Okay. And now to the third uh, task with the satellite images. Here the goal is to detect a uh, flood in a sequence of uh, satellite images. Um, the first method out of three different methods was um, a DCNN approach with a VGG 1619 architectures, both were investigated, on image differencing. So how what were the steps? We have a time series of the RGB and eras near bands. Uh, we create JPEG images that come from the difference of these um, three bands uh, between two uh, sequential images. And uh, once we have that um, image, we check the ground truth uh, whether there was a change from flood to no flood and or the, the opposite way and um, we take that label with this image we train a model with DCNN approach and then when the, the we have a prediction for again the couples of sequential images if one of them uh, is predicted as a flood as positive then we consider the whole sequence uh, as a flooding event uh, the second methodology, um, we took the steps where taking the green and three bands of the events in order to calculate the um, MNDWI uh, water index that was presented earlier, the formula by uh, Benjamin. And uh, after we calculate this, we, we have the first day, then the second day created with this index. We take the difference and um, on for every pixel of um, that um, difference image, we check if it is an outlier with this, uh, in th within this space uh, to check uh, if it's an outlier. If more than 5% of the pixels on the image are outliers, then we consider it, um, then we create this mask that it's, um, okay, if, the, um, if it's an outlier, then it's white. Or if it's not an outlier, it's black. So this uh, result is uh, the, 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 the point, the pixels that are supposed to be flood water. And the third uh, methodology, by using the uh, MNDWI index, uh, if it was above uh, zero, then we suppose that this uh, pixel is water. So uh, we turn the images into watermarks. These are the red ones. And then taking in a sequence the number of pixels that are water, we have this time series of integers. And by calculating the, uh, the z-score, which is for outlier detection, uh, we check for each of these uh, integers if they are outliers in the sequence. If there is one outlier in the whole sequence, then we consider it again a flooding incident. OK, these are the results. Um, the DCNN approaches went quite well um, considering that the training set was really small and uh, the, the best approach was using MNDWI for image differencing and then the change detection but the, uh, the, the third methodology didn't go well um, because we think that you have all this remote sensing information and we have limited 
just to ones and zeros of uh, waters, of water pixels. That's all. Thank you very much.